Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff and in today's video lecture we will be discussing about the Lacy's Silt Theory for the design of regime channel. Now uh, if you have followed the previous lectures, uh, there we have discussed in detail about this term regime channel and the behavior of the flowing river in terms of silting and scoring phenomena. We have discussed in detail about these silting phenomena, scoring phenomena and a regime channel. In line of that, after this we have discussed in detail about the Kennedy's theory for the design of regime channel and we have discussed what were the parameters Mr. Kennedy considered for, the, for his theory for design of regime channel and what were the design steps that were given by him and we did uh, basically two numericals on this topic so all these things we have discussed in the previous lecture in today's lecture we are going to discuss about Lacy's silt theory now in Kennedy's theory if you have followed uh, that lecture series there we have discussed what were the shortcomings of Kennedy's theory we had discussed there that Kennedy in his theory assumed that the eddies are generated only at the bed slope. He completely neglected the eddies that are generated at the side slope and based upon that he basically defined the regime state of a channel. This, was, this is the major uh, shortcoming of Kennedy's and this shortcoming was covered by Lacy in his theory. Now, in Lacy, in his theory, he proposed that there is not one single state of regime. Instead, there are basically three regime conditions. That is, there may be three stable conditions for a irrigation canal or a irrigation channel. What were the three conditions? He categorized those three conditions in the form of initial regime, true regime, and the final regime. Let's discuss about initial regime first. Now in initial regime, Lacy said that a channel will be in an initial regime state when only the bed slope of the channel is varying. Okay, so if we are having an irrigation channel section Correct. This is a irrigation channel section that runs along the length. Correct. This is the bed bed slope of the channel section. Now, if only the bed slope of the channel section is allowed to vary, then this bed slope will vary based upon the flow of water that is going through the channel section and based upon the velocity of the water based upon the discharge that is flowing in the water eventually there will be some silting or end scoring and eventually the channel will achieve a stable condition this is the case when only the bed slope when only the bed slope is allowed to vary the wetted parameter remains the same now an example can be uh, the boundary or the side slope of the channel sections we have lined it with concrete so that neither silting nor scoring from the side slope can take place and only the bed slope of the channel is allowed to vary so if that is the case if only the bed slope of the channel is allowed to vary then based upon the flow of the water the, the bed slope will adjust itself and eventually there will be a condition where there will be neither silting nor scoring and that condition is what Lacy is defined as the initial regime. Now this initial regime state you can imagine it, it will depend upon the quantity of water that is moving in the irrigation canal and the discharge that is moving in the irrigation canal. Now for a normal scenario, for a normal scenario, 
in an irrigation canal let's say the velocity of the water is v1 and the discharge is q1 now suppose there is flooding there is heavy rainfall and because of this heavy rainfall the velocity and the discharge increases correct because of the flooding in the canal the discharge is increased and the velocity of the flow of the water will increase now what will happen to the bed slope since bed slope is the only slope that is allowed to vary so because of the this increase in the discharge and the velocity of the water of course there will be there will be scoring from the bed of the channel correct there will be scoring from the bed of the channel so in that scenario the shape of the channel section will become something like this likewise in the same channel section let's say this channel section is now facing a drought condition and because of the drought condition the quantity of discharge is decreased and because of which the velocity is also decreased so whatever sediment this flowing water was carrying it will start to accumulate it will start to accumulate these sediments will start to accumulate over the bed slope because side slopes are fixed so again the bed slope varies and the discharge and the velocity varies so the point is that this regime state is achieved for a specific discharge and a specific velocity it may vary based upon the change in the velocity and the change in the discharge over time so what lesi said that initial regime is not exactly a regime condition this initial regime is not exactly a regime state this is a temporary stable condition that is achieved by an irrigation canal for a specific velocity for a specific velocity of flow of water and this specific quantity of discharge that is flowing in the water and as soon as the discharge varies as soon as the velocity varies this regime state will also change okay so as soon as the discharge and the velocity varies again there will be silting there will be silting and scoring from the bed slope that will take place and hence a new regime state will be achieved therefore this is a this is a temporary condition this is a temporary regime condition to put in the simplest words this is a temporary regime condition that a channel section achieves a channel section achieves for a, for a specific value for a specific value of discharge and velocity okay hence hence this condition is not a regime condition not actually this is not actually a regime condition but a temporary condition that is achieved for a specific scenario i hope this is clear all right and for this kind of conditions this is sil theory is not valid because it keeps on changing as the discharge and the velocity changes all right this is your initial regime then lesi discussed about another regime condition that is called as the true regime a true true regime condition now what is this true regime condition a true regime condition is a condition where there can be only one channel one bed slope at which the channel having a given discharge in a particular quantum of silt would be in regime let's discuss what this this what this statement means this statement means that in a channel section a channel section will be in a regime state 
a channel section will be in a regime state for a specific discharge value for a specific at a specific velocity for a specific silt or soil particles that are there in the canal bed okay so this basically this regime condition or the true regime condition is for an artificial channel section so as an irrigation engineer basically as in when a canal section is designed that is designed to take up a certain discharge value at a certain velocity for a certain kind of silt particles that are there in the respective area so lacy said that there can be a true regime condition that is there can be a true stable condition that can be achieved for a specific discharge value at a specific velocity for a specific silt particle and that kind of regime condition can only be achieved for artificial channel sections that have a designed slope or a fixed slope a designed discharge or a target discharge at a uniform rate but and and that carries a fixed amount of silt at the same rate so what we have done is we have calculated precisely what amount of discharge is going to flow in this irrigation canal at what velocity and what is the type of silt particles that are there at the canal bed and when this is done so there will be neither silting nor, nor scoring and we have basically achieved a regime state but like we have discussed is it possible to have a fixed quantity of discharge throughout the life of irrigation canal or there is a homogeneous quantity of silt type during the life of irrigation canal it's not possible because there is seasonal variations the climatic variations because of which the discharge of the canal section can increase or decrease as the case may be there is no uniform type of silt particle dominant silt particles can be there but uniformity is a is not possible so in true condition basically it is a ideal scenario this is an ideal scenario that is in in our irrigation canal we have a same quantity of discharge that is flowing at a same velocity the silt particles are homogeneous and if all the conditions are in our control and hence and hence there will neither be silting nor scoring in this type of irrigation canal so basically everything is fixed and therefore the the, uh, the channel section will achieve a regime state so basically it's a ideal scenario and that is what lacy defined as a true regime condition all right so this condition this such conditions are are very idealistic in nature and don't exist in practical or reality however lacy's silt theory is valid for such a regime condition all right then came the third type of regime condition that lacy is defined and that condition is called as the final regime condition now what is the final regime condition final regime condition is that in a in a irrigation canal if we allow if we allow everything to vary if we allow everything to vary this means that the bed slope is allowed to vary the side slopes are allowed to vary for practical example let's say these are made up of soil the side slope as well as the bed slope is made up of soil so what will happen is based upon the type of discharge or the velocity that is flowing in the irrigation canal and the type of silt bed particle that is there and the type of bed slope that is there in the irrigation canal there will be there will be silting and scoring condition that's going to take place 
so as in when the discharge is increased and the velocity is increased there will be there will be scoring of the bed particle and as in when this is decreased as in when there is decrease there will be silting of the bed particle likewise the same will happen from the side there might be there might be there might be deposition of the particle or there might be erosion of the particles from the sides as well so as and when the, it is allowed to happen based upon the variable condition that are there in the irrigation canal so eventually for the given discharge value the channel will achieve achieve a regime state the channel will itself achieve a regime state this means that as and when the discharge the discharge value is increased so of course there will be some scoring from the sides there will be scoring from the bed slope so for the given discharge value the shape will change the shape of the party shape of the irrigation canal will change all right and eventually it will achieve a it will achieve a regime state for a given discharge value so a final regime condition a final regime condition is that if all the variables like parameter depth slope etc are free to vary and can adjust according to the discharge and grade of the silt and there occurs no silting and no scoring then such channel section are said to achieve a permanent stability which is called as final regime all right so for a given discharge value for a given discharge value for a given discharge value as and when as and when all the parameters are allowed allowed to vary so eventually there might be depending upon the discharge there might be some silting phenomena there might be some scoring phenomena and eventually and eventually the channel section will achieve its own shape its own shape will be achieved by the channel section and that is what is referred to as the final regime state that is what is referred to as the final regime state all right so basically these are the three regime conditions that lisi is proposed and he said that and the lisi theory is basically valid for the true regime condition as well as the final regime condition okay now based upon the uh, this philosophy he said that uh, since all the dimensions and every parameter is allowed to vary in an irrigation canal so what happens is if you allow all the dimensions to vary and the canal section is made up of let's say a coarser silt particle then this is the kind of shape that the canal section will achieve the shape will be somewhat like this this is for coarse silt particle coarse silt particles if the silt particle is of medium size then the shape that the canal section will achieve it will be somewhat like this this is for medium silt particle this is for medium silt particles and if the canal bed is made up of final particle then the shape will be somewhat like this this is the the canal or the channel shape for fine silt particle for fine silt particle and you can very well imagine like if the bed slope and the side slope are made up of coarse aggregate these are made up of made up of, of some medium size particle and then 
these are made up of extremely fine particle so you can very well imagine which is more easier for the water to carry out right a flowing water a flowing water for a flowing water it's very easy to carry out the fine silt particle so that is why lot of erosion you are seeing at the fine silt particle in comparison to the in comparison to the medium silt particle and the coarser silt particle okay coarser silt particle are difficult to be carried out so that's why they are having this kind of shape and the fun and the like fine silt particles are easy to carry so that's why this kind of shape is being being produced okay so this was the uh, the uh, three regime conditions that the lacy is proposed apart from that if you recall kennedy said kennedy kennedy said that in a channel section this silting and scoring happens because of the eddies that are generated at the base of the channel right at the bed slope these eddies are generated which are responsible for the silting and scoring phenomena however lacy is said that this is not the case eddies are also generated from the side slope okay eddies are also generated from the side slope and these eddies are also responsible for the for the silting and scoring phenomena again a very prominent observation by lacy's likewise if you recall there was uh, there were other shortcomings that were given by uh, kennedy and those shortcomings were basically covered by lacy's so let's uh, discuss the design steps that were given by lacy's and then we'll compare the kennedy theory with the lacy's theory so just like kennedy lacy also proposed his own design philosophy and the design procedure that he proposed for a regime condition or a regime irrigation canal was that first of all we have to calculate the velocity of the flow of water in the regime channel for that he gave his own formula the formula was the velocity v will be equal to q into f square by 140 to the power 1 by 6 where f f is the silt factor which is equals to 1.76 under root dmm dmm is the average particle size of the river bed q is the discharge very important observation if you recall kennedy he just gave the silt factor without any proper uh, justification while lacy gave a silt factor that is correlated with the average particle size and then he gave his own formula for, to find out the velocity which is equals to q f to f to the power 2 v is equals to q f square by 140 to the power 1 by 6 the second step is to find out the hydraulic mean depth again a formula given by lacy himself r is equals to 5 by 2 v square by f v is the velocity that we have found in the step 1 f is the silt factor and then r, r equal to 5 by 2 v square by f then we have to find out the area area is equals to q by v and then we have to find out the wetted parameter step number 4 is to find out the wetted parameter again a formula given by lacy himself 4.75 under root of Q Q is the discharge. Then the fifth step is to compute the bed slope. To find out the bed slope, the formula for which was again given by Lacy that S is equals to F to the power five by three divided by three three four zero Q to the power one by six. Okay, so the bed slope formula was also again given by Lacy himself. S is equals to f which is the silt factor to the power 5 by 3 3, 3 divided by 3340 q to the power 1 by 6 so these were the five steps that were proposed by lacy for the design of regime channel in the first step we have to find out the velocity given by the lacy's formula q f square by 140 to the power 1 by 6 f is the silt factor where uh, which is again correlated to the diameter of the 
divided by uh, particles 1.73 root d then hydraulic mean depth r equals to 5 by 2 v square by f then we have to find out the area is equal to q by v then wetted parameter p is equals to 4.75 root q and the bed slope s equals to f to the power 5 by 3 divided by 3340 q to the power 1 by 6. So these are the five steps that are given by Lacy's to design a, a regime channel. Okay. Now let's compare this Lacy's design step or the Lacy's theory with the Candy's theory. And you can see all the shortcomings that were there in the Candy's theory were basically covered by Lacy's in his theory. So if I say what are the limitations of Candy's theory, we have already discussed in the pre previous lectures, what are the what are the positive factors of Lacy's theory? So all the shortcomings that were there in the candies were covered by Lacy's, and that is the best thing about the Lacy's theory. What are the shortcomings that that were covered by Lacy's in his theory? The first and the prominent was that Kennedy neglected the eddy generated from the side of the channels, which was taken into account by Lacy's in his theory. We have already discussed, right? That Kennedy assumed that the eddies are generated only at the bed slope, and Lacy's said that the eddies are generated from the bed slope as well as from the side slope also. Then the second parameter was that, or the second limitation of Kennedy was that Kennedy stated that all the channels are in regime if they don't silt or score. Whereas Lacy differentiated between the two regime conditions, initial regime and final regime. Again, a very important observation by Lacy in his uh, in his study. Kennedy said that if there is no silting or no scoring, basically we have achieved a unif we have achieved a stable channel section. We have achieved a, a stable condition for all kind of scenarios. That is what. Kennedy said, however, as he said, that is not the case. We have an initial regime condition and we have a final regime condition. A initial regime condition is basically a temporary regime condition that is there for a specific discharge value and specific velocity, specific silt particles. If these vary, then this regime condition will also vary. And then there is a final regime condition that is there if we allow all the parameters to change. So that is was again a prominent difference between uh, Kennedy and Lacy theory. Then Kennedy has not given a relation between silt factor and grain size, which has been provided by Lacy. Very important parameter. If you recall, Kennedy gave m m critical velocity ratio, and uh, he arbitrarily like. Uh, gave the value of, of m and said that it is based upon my observations, my experience that I'm giving the value of m. While Lacy gave a proper justification for factor f, he correlated with what? With the diameter of the silt particle that is there. If you see here, he has a given a proper correlation for this factor 1.76 under root of d. While Kennedy simply just said that it is based upon my experience. So no proper justification was given. So that is again uh, advantage of Lacy's theory. Then Lacy has given his own equation for finding channel bed slope, which was not provided by Kennedy. As we have seen in the steps, this is the formula given by Lacy's. Lacy gave his own equation to find out the actual velocity. Again, a very important parameter that was covered by Lacy in his theory. If you again recall, uh, the actual velocity in Kennedy's theory was found using Cutter's equation or Manning's equation or Chazy's equation, though Kennedy said that Cutter, he will favor Cutter's equation. So all the shortcomings of these, all the assumptions, all the limitations of these equations were applicable in Kennedy's theory, while Lacy, Lacy covered that gap. He said that I'm giving my own equation. What is the equation? Equation is v equals to q f square by 142 power 1 by 6. This is my equation and use this equation to find out the actual velocity. 
Okay, so this was again a shortcoming of Pandy that was covered by Lacey's in his theory. Okay, so this this was all about the Lacey theory. In the next lecture, we are going to do one numerical on uh, the design steps of Lacey's. All right, so for this video lecture, this is uh, all about the Lacey's theory. I hope all the uh, parameters are. Uh, clear to you and if you find this video uh, useful and informative and uh, serves your purpose do like the video share your views in the comment section and uh, do subscribe to the channel for more videos like this thank you for watching have a nice day